Hi, my name is Sophia Newberg. I'm a senior. I'm an American Studies major and a media and film minor. And we're just going to have a conversation to get to know you a little bit more. It, it is, Sophia, it's so nice to meet you. I'm Mark. Uh, I was an English and philosophy major as an undergrad. Nice. And then I did English for my graduate work. And uh, I'm still a professor of English at Skidmore, and I serve as president. So today I have eight questions because you are the eighth president of Skidmore it, it College. It all adds up, doesn't it? I know, it, it really yes. does. Congratulations, Thank first you. of all. Really Very nice kind. to have you. Great to be here. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, I, we've never met before, so I just wanted to learn more about you. Um, so just to get started, when you were younger, what did you want to be when you grew up? <laughs> so when I was really young, uh, I thought I was going to be Captain America. It was like quite clear to me that that was that was like a, something I really wanted to do, and I held on to that for for quite some time. You know, I, I let it go eventually, but I've I've thought about that. Like, why why that? You know, why did I want to do that? And I think something about sacrifice, heroism, leadership, mm, fighting for something, but also knowing mm, there's some problems with what we're fighting. But you know, there's some irony in that. Captain America from my comic book days back in the early 70s. So, so that was, that was what I wanted to be for for quite some time. That's a good one. That's a good answer. Well, thank you. Nice. Yeah. Now, if I thought I was going to look like Chris Evans or something doing it, that would have been even better. But <laughs> yeah. that wasn't in my mind. I know. Some people are just gifted. Exactly. Not me. <laughs> mm. So, I heard you like literature. Can you tell me about it? What drew you to literature? I do. I love literature, and that that goes back junior high, high school. I thought I was going to be a high school English teacher for a long time and then really got excited in college about just delving deeper and, and reading literature like, like a scholar and a writer. Uh, I love entering into an imagined world mm -hmm. that somebody has, has just miraculously created. And, and if it really works, if it's a great world like a, a Jane Eyre or a Huck Finn or a Beloved, it becomes your imagined world, and you live in there as truly as you live in the other world. And, and of course, then it teaches you things. I will always remember sophomore year of college, I was living in an apartment, and I started reading the last short story in James Joyce's collection, Dubliners, and it's called The Dead. Long short story. And it was, it was one in the morning I started, and I thought, well, I'll just get started. And I got so caught up in the character Gabriel and his wife Greta, and was he going to tell her how he felt, and was she going to reveal the secret, and, and I, I could not put it down. And then I finished, and it was, it was rapturous. It was just so quickening of, of thought and feeling, and I thought, wow, this, this is something created that has had such an impact on me, and have really enjoyed that. That's been the real kick of teaching literature is, helping students, being with students when they have those experiences, you know, what, whatever it might be that they're reading. I read Dubliners when I was a senior in high school, and I loved it, and I loved that one specifically. That was the best short story out of all of them. Best short story in the English language. It's Absolutely so good. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. It was the only one where it's like, I really felt like, you know what, I actually like reading yeah. for school. Like, <laughs> this was good. Um, <laughs> yeah. That we was got like, so much in common. This I is know. Great. We're just best friends. Um, so, but I've only seen you on campus. That's a problem. So, what do you do off campus? What are your favorite hobbies? Hobbies. I don't have that many hobbies. Uh, the the biggest one for me uh, for for years and years has been martial arts. Uh, I do karate and tai chi and aikido, and I have taught those over the years. Um, and I always was looking for hobbies. Barbara and I have three sons. I was always looking for hobbies I could do with the boys. I was always very suspicious of hobbies that would take parents out of the, the, the home. So um, they, all, they all did martial arts. They all got their black belts. I was able to award those black belts to them. That was really wonderful. Um, lately, I've gotten back into a hobby that my dad taught me years ago, which is fly fishing. I've gotten pretty good at martial arts. I'm really bad at fly fishing, but I really love it. And it's something I can do with, with my kids as well. Um, and then uh, Barb and I just had our first ever golf lesson. I've always felt golf would be a very bad sport for me. It would raise my blood pressure, my frustration level. But I figure, so again, something we can do together, because now the youngest boy is off at college, so our, the house is empty. So we're looking for things to do together. So maybe that'll be a new one for us. I don't know if you know, but this past summer I worked for a fishmonger, Samuel and Sons. So wow. I also have a background in fish as well. Look at this. I love fish. 
Man, <laughs> you and so I are fun. simpatico. Literally, on the same level. Yeah. <laughs> so, what values are most important to you? Ooh, yeah, good question. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use a literary example that I've used before, because I I I think the the most meaningful values are are simple ones. So at the end of the Brothers Karamazov, Dostoevsky's great Russian novel, we get to the very end, 900 pages long, and the last brother, Alyosha, is talking to the to the young people of the town, to the youth, and 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 they say to him basically, what what is the wisdom? What what can you leave us with? And he looks at them, and, and as readers, we're waiting too. Like, okay, I'm on page 899, what's, <laughs> what's the wisdom? And Alyosha, who's so wise, he says, let us first of all be kind and then honest. And, and that's it. And I remember reading that, again, I was in high school or in college when I read that, and I thought, kindness, 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 which I think, I think our world needs now more than I've ever seen it before. You know, we're, our first reaction doesn't seem to be kindness these days. And then, and this is very important in my professional work too, we got to be truth tellers. Tell the truth, be honest. Um, if, if we all did those two things, be kind, lead with kindness, and always tell the truth, I, I think probably 95% of our world problems would go away. Not all of them, we're, we're fallen, flawed creatures, we'd still have problems, but I think those two things are, are really what it comes down to. Nice, I yeah. agree. Thank you. I like that. That was good. All right. That was good to hear. <laughs> okay. So, you know, I'm a senior in college right now, and I've been reflecting about my time here in Skidmore and everything I've done. Some good, a lot of bad. It's okay. It is. <laughs> Do you have any regrets that you have from your college, your time at college? And could you give any advice to college students right now? Mm, that's a tricky one. So... So, you know, I, I became a professor and a, and a provost and a president. Obviously, I'm a academic books guy. Uh, I actually did five years as an undergrad because I couldn't decide on my majors. I ended up doing two degrees, summer school for three years. I mean, I was like books and study. That was, that was my thing. When it's all said and done, there was a professor who once dropped some advice on me that I have really come to value. He said, don't let your classes get in the way of your education. And, and obviously, I, you know, I went with classes, that was what, but, but had I it to do all over again, I wouldn't change it much, but a little bit more people time, I think I would have, I would have really valued. And um, one of the things I really love about being president that I, that I wasn't able to do as much when I was, you know, when you're a professor or a scholar, for most of us, that is a very solitary pursuit. You're with your books, you're with your lab material, you know, whatever it is. As president, it's really, it's relating to people. And I'm really enjoying that. And I almost feel like I'm making up for lost time. Mm -hmm. All those years in the archive and, and the library and so forth. I love being on campus and interacting with people. So to go to your really good question, what would I say to, to students today? Obviously classes, you'll get that academic experience, but really do make sure you're getting all the other things too and connecting with people in ways that you'll, you'll, you'll treasure for the rest of your lives. So. You know, getting an A on the paper, really important. But if you got a B plus and you had this unforgettable experience with a friend that the two of you will never forget, I would lean towards the experience, frankly. I would too. Okay. And you know, even though my parents do tell me, maybe dial down the social uh, and yes. get back to the books. Yes. If a <laughs> parent ever watches this, they'll probably be like, what are you saying? You, you know, but... But that's what I would it's say. It's just what it is. It is yeah. what it is. It's about people. That's, totally. what, that's where we get our meaning. So to jump right off of that, if you were a student today at, on campus, what club would you join? Oh, what club? That's tough at Skidmore. There's like a gazillion clubs. I, I love that part of Skidmore. Have you been to the club It's overwhelming. I, I am eager to see that. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, I, yeah, like I probably like a, a, a martial arts club would be a natural or a, uh, the outing club where I, th I think everybody's in the outing club. So I love that. Honestly. But maybe I'd, I'd also seek out something I'd never done before. Maybe, um, I don't know, Irish step dancing or uh, I, I'd look for something that would push me out of my comfort zone because that's always good for us. Mm -hmm. And it's always more fun than we think. And somewhere I would, I would meet, meet people maybe that I didn't expect. So maybe also something that would be a different culture or tradition outside of my own, 
that would be exciting. I, I would like to think that's what I would try to embrace. I did the same thing. I thought of the same thing. So I, I joined the Frisbee team freshman ah, year. Nice. And now that I'm a senior, I would definitely identify more as a social member. Okay. I very much so try to get stay off the field. <laughs> but I like I still like being around. I like being a part of it. That's it's it. fun. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's I'd what never makes done it, it before. I was like, might as well. I get yep. to run around a field for two hours. Great. It, it's like when I go fly fishing with someone, it's the time with the person and then being on a stream, being out in the in the wilderness. And if a fish happens to bite the fly out of sheer luck, that's a bonus. Yeah, it's just know? a fish. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Continuing with imagining that you're a student on campus right now, um, if you had a chance to go back to school at Skidmore, what would your major be? Ooh, at Skidmore. So I'd have to have like four majors because everybody here seems to have, which I love, <laughs> all the different majors and minors. Um, that was kind of my, my undergrad. So I was, uh, the, what, how many majors did I have at a time? Classics, Russian studies, music, philosophy, English, uh, religion. So I finally settled on philosophy and English. If I were to do it again at, at Skidmore, I'd probably do economics because I think economics is just amazing. Fast. It's kind of got everything in it. So I really love, I really love econ and, and the way it trains people to think about society. And then, so if, if I were 18 at Skidmore, I, I think maybe dance. I would love to do something like that. Definitely something, something in the arts and um, may, and, and the, the kinetic art, something where I could, so I, I think that, I think that's what I'd do. Nice, very nice. Okay, so your one request for this video was that the final question be made by me. And, you know, it took me some time. I really pondered, definitely a lot of shower thoughts thinking about it before I came here today. And I was just thinking, it's about to be your inauguration. That's a pretty stressful thing to do, it's scary. What? are four songs that are like on your hype up playlist for it. <laughs> <laughs> four songs. So it's a, two of them are easy. In My Life by the Beatles and Grow Old With Me by John Lennon because those are two songs that Barb and I had performed at our wedding in St. Leo's Church back in Tacoma. And, and we go back to those all the time, all the time. Um, two other songs, really different. So, so one, Fat Bottom Girls by Queen because it's just one of the greatest frickin' songs to listen to in the world. Mm -hmm. And um, all the fourth one would have to be Thunder Road by Bruce. Great. It just takes us to another place. I saw him front row in Philadelphia. It was life-changing to see the boss. It was yes, great. It I loved it. Yep. I saw him back in 1980 on the River Tour in Seattle. And then we saw him in New Jersey a couple times too. That's great, yeah. especially in New Jersey, hometown exactly. tour. That's where oh. it has to happen. My mom went to one in Asbury Park and somehow oh, finagled her way into his like after show dinner party. Seriously? Yeah, so she hung out with Bruce and he really liked her and then invited her to the show the next night. Wow. So my father could have been Bruce Springsteen. Sadly, it's not. <laughs> it's okay, you went to Mule, so it's all right. Uh, um, it all works out. I know, <laughs> it's, it's okay, we're living our life. Now I'm here, I wouldn't be at Skidmore if Exactly, Bruce this is what brought you to where you are. Yes. There you go. It's all about the journey. There you go, that's why we don't look back with regret, we look forward with where we've where we've come. Nice, great. Yeah. That was great. This is so fun this talking to you today. This was fantastic. This is so, we should do it every week. This yeah. is terrific. Same time next week? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I think I'm getting inaugurated next week, so oh, we might have right. to Oh my God, I completely forgot. Yeah. Oh God, well, maybe yeah. I'll see you there. I hope so. This is yeah. great, thank you so much. Thank you, very kind of you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Awesome. <laughs>